You're listening to The Monetized Mom, the podcast that teaches moms of faith how to monetize their expertise online to create influence, impact, income, and more importantly, financial independence. I'm your host, Flo Alexander. Let's chat. Hey, mama, if you're listening to this, I know one thing about you. You want to be able to exit your corporate career so that you can spend more time with your spouse and kids, have the freedom to travel and live life on your own terms, all while creating real transformation and impact in the lives of others with your expertise. Well, you're in luck. I just released a new case study on the method moms are using to build a profitable online business, make a full-time income from home, and quit their nine to five. You can access it now at themonetizedmom.com forward slash study. That's themonetizedmom.com forward slash study. Again, themonetizedmom.com forward slash study. Let's get on with the show. To grow your coaching business this year, you're going to have to master one thing. You're going to have to learn how to ask your clients. And I know you're wondering, what do you mean by ask your clients? Ask them what? That's what we're going to be talking about today. In fact, this is going to be a part of a three-part series. So you want to make sure that you tune back in next week and the week after so that you can get all the tea on what I'm about to drop today. If you are tuning into this, then you are probably a coach or consultant who wants to grow their business. Like, obviously, you want to actually start making money in your business. You don't want your business to continue feeling like a hobby. If it's feeling like a hobby, and you're probably tired of that, right? You want to start making some money. Well, friend, in addition to the gems that I'm going to be dropping today, the things that you're going to learn today, I also want you to uh, want to invite you to my watch my 100% free training where I show you exactly how to create a program and offer that your clients will pay you thousands for, even if you don't have it created yet. So that's some real tea. Now, to get this exclusive tea, In that training, just comment the word invite if you're on Facebook and YouTube. If you are on Instagram, I want you to DM me the word invite and I will get you that link so that you can watch that exclusive training where I'm going to be dropping even some more gems that you don't want to miss. Okay. But as for today, let's go ahead and hop in. Now, hopefully, all of you want to grow a successful business. I think. That's what we all go into business for, especially if you are um, working full time and you actually want to leave your um, place of work. You want to exit your career. Obviously, you want to grow a profitable business, a successful coaching business that will allow you to do that. But despite that desire, I found that a lot of people aren't really willing to do this one simple thing that I'm going to be sharing with you that will get you there. Now, this is learning how to ask your clients. That's what I told you at the top of this broadcast, learning how to ask your clients. And now if you've been rocking me with me for a while, then you already know ASK is an acronym, A-S-K. That is an a- acronym, all right? So we're gonna be talking about the first letter of the acronym today. And then of course, this is a three-part series, so you gotta come back for the rest. But the first letter in that acronym is you have to learn how to acquire your clients. The A stands for acquire. So take some notes. If you haven't started already, you have to learn how to acquire your clients. Quite simply, if you don't master how to acquire your clients with a simple system, you will not have a business. Plain and simple. If you don't have clients, you don't have a business. That's how the math works out in that scenario, right? But you you need a simple way to acquire those clients But even before then, you have to know what kind of clients you're actually trying to acquire. So who is the perfect client whose problem you have the ability to solve with your program? So before we even talk about strategies for acquiring your clients, you have to get crystal clear on who that client actually is. Who are you actually solving a problem for with your coaching program, with your business? And we're not just talking about demographics. A lot of times people get caught up in well, my ideal client lives in this state or this country. They're this, you know, this old. They um, drive this car, right? They make this much in their salary. Like 
we get focused on the demographic information, but that's not actually what you need to focus on. You actually need to be focusing on the psychographic information. You need to dive deeper and understand what their pain points are. What are their motivations? What are their secret desires that they have that your program can address? So I know a lot of times when people are creating these avatars or if you're searching for avatar templates on Google, you'll see stuff like what's their favorite place to eat? What's their favorite drink um, from Starbucks? Like all those things are really not important. You need to get to the meat of what their problem is. So what are they struggling with? What is their secret desire? So when, why do they actually want to get their problem solved? What's driving them, right? What's the driver behind them wanting to get their problem solved? So what is their motivation? These are the things that you actually need to know about your clients before you can actually employ, um, deploy some of the marketing strategies that I'm actually going to be teaching you to acquire those clients. So first things first, when we're talking about acquiring clients, you have to know who those ideal clients are as are as I like to say what is your perfect client profile? Where do they actually need to be in their journey so that you're able to help them and what are those things that that motivate them? What are their desires? What are their pain points that your program can actually address, okay? So I mentioned at the at the top of this broadcast that you can get access to that exclusive training where I teach you about some of this stuff. This is one of the things that we go through identifying your perfect client. I actually give you the same exercise that I teach my paying coaching clients um, that goes through how to identify that perfect client and being able to identify those pain points, those desires, and those motivations. So again, if you um, want to get access to that, that is literally something that I put inside of my paid coaching program. You can um, just type invite in the comments if you're on YouTube and Facebook. If you're on Instagram, just DM me the word invite and I'll get you access to that training so you can actually get that perfect client profile for you to be able to fill out so that you can start having more effective marketing um, campaigns and strategies because now you know who it is that you're actually trying to target and the client that you're actually trying to acquire in your business, okay? All right, so that's the first thing. Before we get into those actual strategies, when you are thinking about acquiring a client, you actually need to be clear on who it is that you're trying to acquire. So after you clarify that, you need a strategy from getting those people to get for getting those people into your world. So those people that you've identified as perfect clients, people that you can help with your program, now you actually have to make the effort to get them into your world, letting them know that you are here and that you can help them solve their problem. And that's what we call marketing, right? It's marketing. And let me be very clear, client acquisition and marketing is not passive. I know what the internet has been saying. The internet has been saying, you can just post on social media. You can just go live on social media. You can just sit back and just collect all the money passively and get all the clients passively. But marketing and client acquisition is not a passive sport. This is something that is active. I heard it best put this way. Um, marketing is an actual business function. So if you go into any corporation, right, there is going to be an HR department. There is going to be a marketing department. There's going to be a probably a customer service department. You have all these, you have operations, you have sales. There are all these functional departments within any corporation. Your business is no different. So if you think about it from that perspective, marketing is a function. And in any corporation, there is a marketing team that is actively always marketing. So if you think about marketing for your business, that is an active function that you have to do. You have to be actively marketing and actively testing out strategies that will allow you to acquire those customers and do it in the shortest amount of time for the least amount of money. So again, client acquisition and marketing is not a passive sport. This is something that you actively have to do in your business. Now, there are some things that you can passively set up, some systems, some automations that can assist with that. But at the end of the day, you have to actively be marketing. Now, if you are saying, I'm not good at marketing or I don't like social media, then fine, don't be in business because that's the way that business works. You have to actually market. And in today's digital world where everyone almost everyone is online, you have to be comfortable at least with using social media to do that. So businesses that don't market don't make money at the end of the day. So if you want to massively grow your business, then you're going to have to master the art of acquiring your clients. And the way that you do that is through marketing. Okay. So let's talk about the three ways that you can acquire clients through marketing. So write this down if you are taking notes. 
The first way, I'm, I'm let me just drop all three at one time. And I, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. So three ways that you can acquire clients, cash, content, and clients, okay? And I'm gonna explain each, th- each of those threes. Cash, content, clients, cash. Pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna pay for clients, right? You're gonna run ads. You will run ads if you want to acquire clients. Now, businesses run ads. I talked about this before. We, again, the internet has has everyone fooled these days thinking that you can do everything for free and not have to put in any effort for doing things. But that is just not the case, right? So if you want to run a successful business, especially if you are in the information space, such as coaching or consulting, then one of the things that you have to think about from a business perspective is being prepared to make financial investments in your business. And one of those financial investments that you can make is paid advertisement. So businesses run ads. We talked about corporations and how your business is like a corporation, knowing that you have to know that a part of your business at some point may include running ads. So if you have the capital to do so, it's the fast track for you to be able to acquire those clients much faster, right? So much faster than doing some organic strategies to be able to acquire clients. But if you have the capital, it it fast tracks your ability to get in front of those ideal clients or those perfect clients that we talked about so that you can move them further down the customer journey, okay? So here's my word of caution though when it comes to running ads. Before running ads, you need to make sure that your messaging is clear. You need to make sure your messaging is correct for the people that you want to reach. There is nothing worse, and I'm saying this from my soul because it comes from experience. There is nothing worse than running ads to the wrong audience. That is the recipe for wasting hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And I'm telling y'all, this is coming from my soul because I have done it before, all right? So if you do want to leverage advertising, paid ads, in your business to help you acquire clients, you have to get your messaging right first. The first step of getting your messaging right is what? Getting your ideal client right. So that's one of the first things that I talked about. You have to get that perfect client profile down. You have to know who it is that you're targeting so that you can get your messaging correct so that when you are running ads, your ads are helping you and not wasting your money, okay? So again, When you are running ads or if you decide to deploy ads as a part of your marketing strategy, you have to have your messaging right from the get-go or else you're going to waste thousands of dollars. And I say that because I'm speaking from experience, all right? So again, if you don't have a lot of time and you do have the capital, running ads using cash is one way that you can leverage to acquire clients into your business, okay? The second thing I said was content. And this is my way of saying organically. You can acquire clients organically. Organic marketing is still a thing. And I know everyone's talking about, well, you got to pay to play. Yes, you can pay to play. However, organic marketing still exists. In fact, I teach my content to client system to my coaching clients within my um, coaching program and they get results. And I use it as well. So I definitely wouldn't tell y'all something to do that I'm not doing myself. The premise of this idea of organic marketing that's going to be successful is you want to create content that leads to conversations, that leads to a call, so getting someone actually on a phone call, which hopefully ends in a close, right? So I'll say that again. You want to create content that leads to conversations, which lead to a call, which hopefully leads to a close. But it all starts with actually creating content. And again, I already said this, if you are one of those people who are like, well, I don't really like social media and I don't really like creating content. Oh, well, I guess you don't want to be in business, right? So if you don't have the capital to run ads for your business, then you have to master this. You have to master organic reach, which means you have to master content marketing. You have to master creating valuable content. Again, this is not just about putting content out there. I've gone on a tangent about this before. So I'm going to go on a brief little TED talk right now or on my little soapbox. It's not just about creating content. It's not about quantity of content. It's about the quality of content that you create. You want to create valuable content that will grab the attention of your ideal client, of that perfect client that you've already established, right? So my rule of thumb is that if someone can Google the content that you're posting, it's not valuable enough. 
if someone can Google the content that you're posting, it's not valuable enough, right? So that takes away about 99% of your how-to content. So if if your whole strategy was posting how-to content and you are a coach, is that takes away 99% of it, right? I can get go on literally about this whole content strategy. The how-to content and all that stuff is great for mass marketing, is great for a broad approach. If you are doing a if your business model is based on volume, is great, right? But if you're in the coaching industry, you're not based on volume. You're very niche down about the people that you can help and the people that you actually want to reach. You're very targeted. So that doesn't necessarily help you, right? In all cases. So it takes away majority of that how-to content. And you have to really be challenged to create something that's going to be of value. So having good organic marketing is going to force you and challenge you to step up to one, be your authentic self, but to also provide value to the people who need your help. It's going to force you to provide substance. And let me just say this, like it's only fair for you to step up and provide valuable content to people that you are um, prospecting or would like to uh, acquire as clients if you are asking them to pay high ticket. It is completely imbalanced to create very minimal content, very non-value added content, and then ask someone to pay you high ticket. That's that's not balanced at all. So if you're going to leverage organic marketing, you have to create valuable content. Again, my rule of thumb, if they can Google it, it's not valuable enough. And if, and if if literally if you're creating content that you yourself are also getting on Google, you do not deserve to have clients who are paying high ticket. That's just that. And that's some tough love for y'all, but I'm just saying when we're th- thinking about organic marketing to, to acquire clients, you have to create valuable content and that's just that stuff you can Google. That's it, valuable content is the experience that you have. It's your own perspective. It's your own thought process, right? It's your own proprietary method for getting results. That is what valuable content looks like so that when someone comes and taps into it, they are going to be attracted to to that content because now you're proving that you can help them. Now you're proving that you're someone of substance. So when they think about pulling out their debit card or their credit card to pay you four figures or more, they feel comfortable because you've given them something of substance. I told you I was going to get on my soapbox and I want to step off. But the second thing, If you want to acquire clients, content, right? Content is your second way avenue of marketing. The third way that I mentioned is clients, right? Referrals. Good clients will refer you out. Like if you have helped a client get results, they will rave about you and they will tell their friends about you. And that's how you can get more clients. That's how you can acquire more clients. So you have to focus on not only acquiring clients, but you need to focus on serving your clients as well. I talked about this last week. So if you missed it, go back and watch last week's live stream. But I talk about the ways that you can get clients this month. And one of the ways that I talked about it was getting referrals, right? So you don't want to rely solely on referrals, but you do want to leverage them, right? So you do want to use this as a way for you to be able to get more clients into your business. So whether that's creating an incentive program for uh, past clients to give a referral or um Or if your clients just want to rave about you, right? Don't rely on it, but definitely leverage it for you to be able to acquire clients. All right. So listen, if you want to massively grow your coaching business, you need to learn how to ask your client. Your first ask is how to acquire your clients. If you missed it from the top, I gave the acronym, right? Ask is an acronym. And the first one that we went over is the letter A, which is you have to learn how to acquire clients. And the way that you're going to do that is first identify who that perfect client is. Who is it that you're actually trying to reach? First things first. And then second second thing, you actually need to have a marketing strategy to actually acquire them. So I went over three ways that you can acquire clients with marketing. First is cash. That's running ads. If you have the capital to do so, do so. But the warning and the caveat that I gave was making sure that before you put money behind running ads to acquire clients is that you have your messaging right and that you have your targeting right. If not, you're going to waste thousands of dollars. Ask me how I know. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second way that you can acquire clients with marketing is content. So this is your organic marketing. And I went on a whole soapbox 
about having valuable content. You want to provide content that your your ideal clients can't Google. They have to come through you to get that that T, right? They got to go through you to get your perspective. It's not something that they can Google. So the second thing that you can do if you want to acquire uh, clients is to have good organic marketing, which means that you have valuable content. And then the third thing is to actually leverage your past clients. So you want to leverage your past clients to be able to get referrals that will help you acquire new clients. All right. So I gave you the first of three things that you need to do. Again, I mentioned this at the top of the broadcast. This is a three part series. We just went over number one and hopefully you were taking notes. Now, if you're like, I can't wait until next week. Like I really need clients right now. I really want to go my coaching business like yesterday. Then I'm going to offer a personal invitation for you to schedule a complimentary strategy session with me where we'll walk through your business. I'll understand your goals and I'll give you a personalized strategy to get there. And yes, I said it's complimentary, all right? So if you're interested in applying for one of those calls, simply comment call. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, if you are on Instagram, DM me the word call and I'll get you the link to be able to schedule one of those calls ASAP. Again, so if you're like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I got to acquire clients. I've been needing to do that yesterday and I need some help with it. I want you to comment, call if you're on Facebook or YouTube. If you are on Instagram, send me a DM that says call so that I can give you the link so that you can apply for one of those complimentary calls where we'll go through your business and I'll help you lay out a personalized strategy for you to be able to grow your coaching business this year. As always, I hope that you found this episode helpful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a review. And with that, I'll talk to you in the next episode.